Then the congratulations to Cameron Bobier as well on home soil. He does pick up his first top five. Absolutely fantastic performance uh, by the home crowd hero. Well, pleased to say that MotoGP roars back into life this weekend in Mizano, but so too does Moto2, and that's what this is all about. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie, along with American Moto2 star Cameron Bobier, and we see we say star because not only of your championships here in America, what you did at Circuit of the Americas a couple of weeks ago, Cameron, was fantastic with that top five. Are you still buzzing? Yeah, man. It was uh, it was a pretty a pretty going into it a pretty stressful weekend but it was an amazing amazing weekend uh obviously you know racing overseas all year being able to come back and race in front of the american fans and uh and my friends and family some of my friends and family came out so um yeah it was uh it was a pretty pretty sweet weekend that's for sure uh, starting friday and all the way to sunday some um, some dumb luck on my behalf. I just happened to be standing right near your pit garage when you came in after the race. And it was right opposite the main grandstand. The roar was amazing. And then when you turned around to acknowledge them, that was a beautiful moment. It was, it was for sure. Just, uh, yeah, just roll in after hot pit, you know, being tired after that race. And uh, even not only just hot pit, but around the track, I was, I was, uh, I was pretty amazed at just like the, the reception the crowd had for, uh, for, you know, a good, good solid finish, a good solid top five. And, uh, yeah, to roll in and see, you know, see how pumped the crowd was and how pumped my team was. That's, uh, that's just the cherry on top of the weekend. That's for sure. So as I mentioned earlier, it's only been a couple of weeks, but what's it done for you? What's that fifth place, your best result in Moto2? What's that done for you, your confidence, the team, everything? Uh, I feel like it, it definitely gave me a little, a little boost of confidence going into the, going into the last few rounds, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to getting back out to Mizano. I'm actually here right now in Italy. Uh, got here a couple days early and get, get reacclimated to the time and all that. But, uh, yeah, I just really want to finish the season strong. You know, I, I felt like it was so good for myself and the team to get a good solid, result run run uh up with the front guys for a little bit um just i mean plain and simple i've been to the, that track before i knew i had track knowledge and uh i think part of the reason why i was so nervous going into that race is because i knew like I, it was like a, it was going to be a good test for me you know rolling out on a track that i've, I've had a handful of laps at and uh racing raced before so uh but yeah, man, it, it went good. It was so, so good for me. Good for my, good for my head rolling on to the, these last couple of races. And uh, yeah, Mizano, I actually struggled pretty good here a couple of weeks ago. So I'm kind of curious to see how we do this weekend. And uh, I actually had a, a really good race, a good weekend in Portimao in Portugal, which is up. Uh, it's the second to last race here in a couple of weeks. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So you go back to Mizano this weekend with lessons learned from the previous one and experience at Portimao. You, you're just outside the top 15 in the championship in your first season in Moto2, where it's been a lot of learning tires, a lot of learning crew chiefs, a lot of learning new tracks, a lot of learning dynamics of the series, the cadence of the season. There's been so much on your plate. So what's going to be good when it's all said and done with, with three races to go? Yeah, like to be honest, I'm not even really paying attention to the, where I'm at in the championship or anything like that. I've just been trying to take it race by race. You know, last time I talked to you, I think it was uh, it was earlier this year at the Jerez test or something like that. And uh, yeah, I'd, like I started the season off actually, you know, not too bad. I I ended up actually it was funny that after after I talked to you, I actually had a pretty rough test at Jerez. So uh, that, that didn't go very good, but then we went to guitar and uh, I got my first, or I qualified decent. And uh, I think I ended up 11th in my first race. And then after that, you know, the season actually started pretty good. So like I said, Portugal, I got my first top 10 there, had a couple other good rides, um, had some tracks that we tested at. Um, I had some somewhat of a, a familiar, yeah, I was familiar with. And then we started going to some tracks that were new for me, or I haven't, you know, some tracks that I haven't been to since I was, you know, a little kid 11 years ago. Um, and that was pretty tough. You know, I found myself in the gravel trap on the ground quite a few times and uh, knocked my confidence pretty good. But 
um, yeah, just slowly started rebuilding that up and to have a good result at, at, uh, at Coda, it, it was everything. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely look, looking to finish the season strong. When you're a five time Moto America Superbike champion, you are used to racing at the front. There hasn't been a terrible amount of that this year. So let's reflect on circuit of the Americas. What was it like to be back up there? It was, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, like I said, just so, so good for my, for my head, just riding up with those guys and seeing, kind of seeing what they do. And, uh, and honestly, the race, it was like a lot. I'm not saying it was easy, but it was just everyone kind of slotted into the rhythm and um, they weren't making dumb passes or anything like that. Like, like we, we do towards, you know, like the middle, middle of the, the pack where uh, you're just fighting for, you're trying to move forward, but you're trying to, you're, pa you're passing, you're getting past. It's just a, a nonstop battle, you know, every lap, every corner. So, um, and on the flip side, I was kind of that guy at the beginning, you know, like I was excited. I was up front. I was kind of stuffing it in there and slowing the pace down just a hair at the beginning. But um, after that, you know, I settled down, I slotted in. And, uh, yeah, it was really good for me to, to ride with those guys and, and see what they do on the bike. So really just want to take that with me and, and roll it into all the other tracks. And just taking a step back and, and reflecting on the year holistically, What's it like being back? And, and we must say during, you know, uh, pandemic conditions, what's it like uh, having been back in Europe on a full-time basis and traveling again and, and, and doing what you've done? Has it, has it been an enjoyable year? Has it been a stressful year? Has it been troublesome or is it, has it been pretty good? Yeah, I'd say it's, I'd say it's up and down, you know, it's been pretty tough traveling around with uh, the COVID situation and all that, but apart from the racing and all that, it's actually been really cool. Just, uh, you know, kind of living in Europe and, and, and traveling around being an adult, you know, renting my own car and getting my, getting my way to the, to the track. I rented a little place in Barcelona. I think I told you earlier this year. Um, that's been really cool. You know, just going grocery shopping or doing whatever we, we bought these little electric scooters. Uh, my fiance and I will ride down to the, to the beach and grab some food and, it's cool just, uh, just, yeah, just doing something new, you know, living, living kind of like a, a new life or just doing something, something different. So. Is it too early to talk about 2022 yet? No, I know. No way. I, uh, like I said, I just want to finish the season out strong and just get this learning season behind me, man. Like I said, I, it's, uh, we, we've had some really, really good moments, don't get me wrong, and uh, not only just like my, my race at Coda, there's been a handful of, of weekends that have been so tough where I'm just, but, but rewarding, you know, like so tough where I'm just like, I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, am I, can I cut it here? You know what I'm saying? At like some new tracks and stuff like that. And, uh, and then come Sunday, I like Magello for, for instance, like I was... 28th in practice and qualifying like 26 like 29th I was just getting smoked all weekend and then come come the race like I didn't really feel like I'm doing anything different but then my time start coming and I, I rode myself into the top 10 you know so there's been some weekends like that where you're just beating your head against the wall and then you turn it around and have a good result and then uh yeah, there's been other weekends where it's going pretty good and you'll find yourself in the gravel trap and then there's there's Coda weekends. So it's been super up and down, but <clears throat> I feel like all the things I went through this year are definitely gonna, gonna help me uh, next year and moving on to the future. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the season wrapped up and uh, working on next year. Sounds like there's a lot of positivity, a lot to look forward to. We're very proud of you back here in the States, flying the, uh, the stars and stripes on the world scene. and. We'll always, sure. uh, we'll always cherish that weekend at Coda. So enjoy Mizano and the, the last three races and uh, we'll, we'll talk more ahead of 2022. Cool. Thanks, Lee. Hi, I'm Will Christian and thank you all so much for watching. I'm here to remind you to hit subscribe for all the latest Supercross news and highlights. And of course, don't forget to sign up for Peacock Premium. That is now the new home for streaming for all live Supercross events all season long.